Welcome to this instructional video to replace Monday's class of February 4th, 2019. So hey, let's consider ionic compounds. And we're also going to call ionic compounds a term that I'm sure you've heard of, salts. Salts, or ionic compounds, are made from a cation, which is positively charged. It could be plus one, plus two, plus three, for example or an and, and an anion. And the cation can come from metals or a polyatomic ion. You should get that ion sheet that I gave you on Friday out right now. Stop the video, get the ion sheet. So where do we get cations from? Atoms make ions, and if it's a metal, they make cations. And we also have one polyatomic ion that is a cation, the ammonium ion. Where do we get anions from? Well, atoms of nonmetals will gain electrons to make anions. So we get these from nonmetals. And we have several, several polyatomic ions that are anions. And we are going to arrange these into what I call a marriage of electrical neutrality. You always are going to combine cations and anions such that when they are combined together in an ionic compound, a salt, there's no net charge. There's going to be a marriage of electrical neutrality. So, ionic compounds, salts, have what we call ionic bonds. And it really, to make this happen, you can think of it as a transfer of electrons. For example, let's think of sodium ion and a, and a chlorine, sorry, let's think of a sodium atom and a chlorine atom. We know a sodium atom has one valence electron, and we know a chlorine atom has seven valence electrons. Well, based on forming ions, sodium wants to be like a noble gas. How does it do that? It gives up an electron. And when it does that, we have Na plus plus that electron. So now we have just formed a cation from sodium. And you know, based on our conversation last Friday, sodium only forms a plus one ion. Only, only, only. Okay? So how are we going to make the chlorine happy? Well, the, the chlorine can actually pick up the electron that was just given off by the sodium atom. And if chlorine can pick up an electron, it forms the what we call the chloride ion. And if we show all the valence electrons now, it has eight. So it is very, very happy. So now we have a cation, we have an anion, the sodium's happy, the chlorine, which is now chloride, is happy. And so we have an ionic compound. Now, how are we going to write this formula? Well, sodium is plus one, chloride ion is minus one, then the formula has to be a one to one. So we've got one in a plus, we've got one Cl minus, so the way we combine these is one to one. And so the formula is NaCl. When you write formulas for ionic compounds, you don't show the charges, okay? You can stop the video, rewind that 101 times, and that's gonna be the case. When you write formulas for ionic compounds, in the end, you can write them with charges to see how they're going to combine, but the final formula will not contain, contain charges. Okay? So, this, the name of this now would be sodium, because the name of the sodium ion is just sodium chloride. That's N-A. CL. Now let me take this opportunity to uh, kind of make the case as I did on Friday is that atoms and ions have very different properties. Here is our what we just made sodium chloride. This is just table salt. 
and there it is. It really is what we call a lattice of ions. It's a solid, it's a salt. Okay, and then here, here we go, there's our table salt. And we have positive charges that are the sodium ions and we have negative charges surrounding each positive charge. Look at this. We have a lattice of ions. It's very stable. So that contains Na plus ion, the sodium ion, and Cl minus, the chloride ion. It's a salt. Now, contrast that with, and we know what salt does for us, we need salt. Sodium, sodium is an essential mineral, if you will, in our diet for our human bodies to work. We need sodium ions. Very important. But, and you know, if you put that in water, it's going to dissolve in water. You put it in your mouth, it's going to dissolve in your mouth. What about sodium atoms in water? Oh boy. Look at this. Fire very reactive. If you put sodium atoms, not sodium ions, sodium atoms in water, it will react with the water and get very hot and actually catch on top of the water, the sodium will actually catch on fire. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I have as clearly as possible tried to point out to you that sodium ions, ions in general, have much different property than atoms do. Just losing that one electron can make all the difference. All right. I'm sure I'll mention that a hundred thousand more times before uh, this chapter is over, but that's a very important point. So, why do we care about salts uh, or ionic compounds? Well, here are just what five examples of why you should care about salts. And there's nothing to memorize here. This is kind of what I call appreciate or FYI, but Salts play a very important role in our life. Ammonium carbonate is what we call smelling salts. If you have somebody passed out, you can wake them up. Uh, barium sulfate, if you're about to have a colonoscopy, hey, congratulations, you get to drink a solution of barium sulfate. Calcium carbonate is an antacid. Calcium sulfate, plaster cast. Lithium carbonate, lithium, the lithium ion, ladies and gentlemen, is used for the treatment of bipolar disorder not lithium atoms, lithium ions. But what I want us to do is take a look at some of these formulas, okay? So let, let's take a look at this. NH42CO3. Well, that's telling me something very important. That's telling you something important, that there are two ammonium ions. By the way, do you have that ion sheet out? Because ammonium is on that sheet. So is carbonate. So the interpretation of NH4 parentheses 2 is telling you there's two ammonium ions and there's one carbonate ion. Ladies and gentlemen, was this a marriage of electrical neutrality to write this formula? I say yes. 2 plus equals 2 minus. So, if I just gave you the name ammonium carbonate, could you write the formula? Yes. Do you know the ions? I hope so. And if you know the ions and their charge, you can arrange them such that you get electrical neutrality. Again, these subscripts give us the number, two ammonium, and then there's no number one for carbonate, but if there's not a parenthesis in a number, it's understood to be one. Okay? Well, let's do a couple more. Calcium carbonate. The formula tells you everything you need to know here. You know, because you know calcium is Ca2+, and you know carbonate, here's carbonate again, is CO3 2 minus. Oh, if we have a one-to-one -one ratio, then we're going to have electrical neutrality. So the, the formula is Ca2 
CO3. Again, polyatomic ions, you always have to keep these together. Okay? But by convention, we don't put these in parentheses. We wouldn't put the CO3 in, in parentheses because there's just one of them. Okay? So there we go. There's our um, antacid. Now, here's what some people want to do sometimes. You could say, well, see, what if, why don't we have two calciums for every two carbonates, we still have electrical neutrality. Yes, but that's not the proper way to write it. We always have to have the lowest combination of numbers. You have one calcium and you have one carbonate that gives you electrical neutrality. All right, the only way to, to learn to do this is to do a many, many, many examples. Lithium carbonate. You're given the formula, but how do we make sense of this? It's Li2CO3. Well, that's telling you you have two lithium ions and you have one CO3 2 minus. That's what that's telling you. So that's why we combine it together for Li2. The subscripts now give us the number of ions. CO3. Three. Do you see any charges in this form in any of these formulas? No, because the final formula do not contain charges, and we have to arrange them such that we get electrical neutrality. This Li2 is telling you you have two Li plus, and this CO3 is telling you you have one CO3 two minus. Okay, again, this is used for uh, treatment of typically bipolar disorder. All right, well, let's do some more because we've got to do several examples. And there's a, an ionic practice sheet on Canvas for you to get even more practice. Okay, so we have magnesium chloride. Well, right away, you can tell from the name that, oh, magnesium is a metal. Chloride came from chlorine. Metal, non-metal, this must be an ionic compound. So you've got to know that magnesium is Mg... 2 plus. Now, how do you know that? Look at the ion sheet I gave you. Okay? And in fact, you don't really need the ion sheet. Look at the periodic table that's in front of you. Magnesium only forms plus 2 ions because of its location on the periodic table. So you know it's Mg2 plus. You know chloride came from chlorine. And you know that that is form, only forms a minus 1 ion. Chlorine is a halogen. It gains one electron to have an octet number of valence electrons. Chloride only is Cl minus. Now you've got to combine these two ions in such a fashion as to get electrical neutrality. So it looks like to me, okay, you need two Mg. Whoa, 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 we need one, 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 one Mg2 plus, plus two Cl minus. Won't that give you two positive charges and two negative charges? Yes, but that's not the formula. We need to be able to write the formula. The formula will be Mg Cl2. One magnesium ion for every two chloride ions. That's what the formula is telling you that you have. Okay? Again, practice, practice, practice. Calcium is always and forever only, in, as an ion, calcium 2+. plus. You, have, you know that from your ion sheet, and you know that from the periodic table. Nitrate. What is nitrate? Nitrate is a polyatomic ion. It's one I've asked you to know. You've just got to learn it. It is NO3 minus. You always have to keep polyatomic ions together. Okay. So here we go. We've got one calcium. Well, we've got a calcium and we've got nitrate. We've got to put them together to affect electrical neutrality. It looks like to me we need one Ca2 plus plus two NO3 minus to get this electrical neutrality. Two plus equals two minus if we combine them this way. 
but that's not the formula that I've written. The formula would be this CA. Now this parentheses is super important. NO3 2. That formula tells you that there's one calcium ion for every two nitrate ions. We will always want to keep nitrate together as a unit. Therefore, we had to put the parentheses around it because we had two of them. Okay, because we have two of them. If we just had one, we wouldn't need the parentheses. Why? That's the rules. We're learning the rules. We got to follow the rules. Okay? All right. K2O. Well, now you're given the formula and you've got to write the name. So, what is the formula telling you? The formula is telling you that there's 2K plus plus 1 O 2 minus. That oxygen, when it forms an ion, forms the oxide ion. And the charge on the oxide ion, according to the yellow ion sheet and the periodic table, is O2 minus. So this formula is correct because it allows for electrical neutrality. But what I want you to do is be able to uh, write the name. Given the formula, can you write the name? Well, sure. This is a potassium ion, K plus, and then the oxygen here made an oxide ion. So this is not potassium oxygen. It has to be. It has to be potassium oxide because this is oxide and this is just potassium. All right. So given name, can you write the formula? Given the formula, can you write the name? We need to practice some more situations. Look at these lovely, beautiful colored salts that I have a picture of here. So <clears throat> the green is copper 2 carbonate. And you may say, well, why, do, why are we having to deal with this too? Because copper is one that can have multiple charged states. Look at the yellow ion sheet and the notes from Friday. So you have to provide or you have to be given some information about which copper ion do we have. Well, you've, give, you've been given that information. The Roman numeral 2 suggests that this is the copper 2 plus ion. That's what that's telling you. And here's your old buddy carbonate. CO3 2 minus. Okay? So how are you going to write the formula which is what I want you to do, given the name, write the formula for copper to carbonate. Well, again, it looks like we have a one-to-one -one ratio needed. One copper two plus ion for every one carbonate. That gives us a marriage of electrical neutrality. So it's CuCO3. You may say, why didn't you put parentheses around the carbonate? And I would say because you only have one you don't need the parentheses. That's how we do it. Now, real quick, what if you had copper one carbonate? Again, this Roman numeral by the copper is super important because it tells you which ion you have of copper. This is Cu plus. Copper one is Cu plus. And carbonate, of course, is CO3, 2 minus. And if we were to write this formula, oh, again, to get electrical neutrality, we would have to have Cu2, CO3. Two copper plus one ions, two of those for every one carbonate ion. Again, you may ask, why don't you put the parentheses around the carbonate? Because you have to keep it together. I would say you don't need the parentheses because you only have one carbonate ion in the formula. That's how we do it. All right. Well, we've got this kind of dingy yellowish salt up top. That is Fe2 
SL43. Oh, interesting. I've, I've been given the formula and I need to write the name and I see iron and my spider sense is tingling because I recall iron is also in this category of multiple charge states and I bet he wants me to specify which specific ion of copper charge state of co uh, excuse me which particular a uh, charge state of iron is present based on the formula can that be done based on the formula do you know right away or at least after some thought which star which charge state of iron is in Fe2SO43 I say yes you should know that here's what the formula is telling you there's two Fe but we don't know the charge on the Fe yet let me make this box a little bit bigger because I want to put a charge state in that box okay let me move this over so it's not so crowded all right and you know we have three SO42 minus now how did you know that was SO42 minus because that's sulfate that's one of the polyatomic ions you have to know how did you know there were three of them the formula tells you there are three of them the formula tells you right here there are three sulfates okay so to get a marriage of electrical neutrality with two iron ions and three sulfate ions what has to be the charge on the iron ion for this to work out it has to be three plus because three times two is six plus equals three times two minus is six minus we have electrical neutrality you knew from the formula that this was iron three plus I gave you enough information for you to figure this out so when we write the name this is iron three sulfate is that three important yes it is if you just put iron sulfate we've got some problems ladies and gentlemen because there's multiple charge states of iron we need to yeah I need to know which one we have uh, in Fe2SO43 okay and you had enough information to figure that out all right well real quick <clears throat> let's do a couple more strontium bromide uh, well you know from the yellow ion, yellow ion sheet in the periodic table in fact you don't even need the the ion sheet here you need to look at the periodic table can you predict what ion strontium will form I say yes you should it's R2 plus can you look from the look on the periodic table and figure out which ion will bromine like the form I say yes you should be able to do that you don't even need your ion sheet for this the periodic table lights your path on this okay we have SR2 plus BR minus again we need to write them a formula such that we have no net charge or electrical neutrality it looks like to me the formula has to be SRBR2. We need two bromide ions for every one strontium ion. Two plus equals two minus. There's our formula. Ammonium fluoride. You know from understanding, you know the ammonium ion, not from the periodic table, from your own mind, because I've asked you to learn some not all of them some polyatomic ions and one of them is ammonium NH4 plus okay <clears throat> fluoride from the periodic table you can look at fluorine and say oh if it gains one electron it'll be like a noble gas so fluorine will always form a fluoride ion F minus 
Oh, we got one in H4, we got one F. If we just do one to one, then there'll be electrical neutrality. So when I write the formula, this is NH4 F. Again, you may say, why don't you put a parenthesis around NH4 because you've been telling us it has to be together as a unit. I would say you don't need to do that here because you only have one NH4. And when you only have one polyatomic ion, you don't use the parentheses. All right. Well, just to wrap this up, this is kind of a funny thing here. You know, we have different uses for different salts and, or, or ionic compounds. Sodium hydroxide is a very common ingredient. Uh, it, in, it's in higher concentrations in a very known product called liquid plumber if your drain is stopped up. Uh, some people actually use it, obviously, in much lower concentrations. It looks like the, one of the world champion bagel makers adds a little bit of sodium hydroxide when making world-famous bagels. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the video for today. Uh, there is going to be a quiz based on this. Uh, I've put a challenge problem on canvas as well to help you get more practice before you take the quiz and don't forget we have lab on Tuesday thank you so much